Hey guys, welcome. I'm Daryl McMillan. This is our section on uh, choreo buildup, and um, I'm here to just keep time, and that's all. And uh, I got a couple of uh, experts up here that are going to talk to you. Okay, and um, we have Brian Clark from Vancouver, British Columbia, right here with us. And we have Ted Lazat from Manchester, New Hampshire, with us. And I'm Daryl McMillan from Decatur, Alabama, and I'm the moderator. And these guys are going to talk, and then we'll we'll see what we come up with later. Might want to do some questions and things like that, and I'm sure you'll have some. So uh, at this time, Brian Clark. Thank you. Um, okay, so I'll just give a brief explanation about myself. Uh, I, I did this presentation last year with John Marshall. It was a lot of fun, and they asked me to do it again this year. Uh, for those of you that heard it on the, uh, on the recording from last year, I'm pretty much going to do the same thing I did last year, with, maybe with a few variations. Uh, thank you, Randy. <laughs> Anyways, um, so what, what, uh, what, what, I guess about my background, I, I come from the Pacific Northwest, and in the Pacific Northwest, we have what's known as the Pacific Northwest Teen Square Dance Festival, and what it is is it's the only annual running square dance competition in the world that's been going on now for 62 years. Uh, so functionally, it's been going along longer than Collar Lab has. Uh, we've been... Uh, I guess competing in score dancing for years and years and years, and and what happens with with the world I come from is that we learn how to dance by definition from square one, and the difficulty for a young caller going out into the real world of score dancing is you very quickly find out that dancers can't do what the teens do at the teen festival. And I got into a lot of trouble, and it killed me a few times where I would be at an open dance and thinking, oh, it would be really cool right now if I called three-quarter zoom into a right and left grand. And I watched the entire floor break down and die, and, and, I, and as a teen caller, you know, you're devastated because the dancers can't do what you're saying. And, and I was disappointed in, in the fact that they couldn't do it without thinking to myself, well, I didn't lead into it. I didn't give them a, a hand. I didn't help them. And that's one of the biggest things that you learn as a caller through the years. And I was able to watch some of the best challenge callers um, uh, because I, I ended up dancing advanced and challenge as, as uh, I tend to be uh, that kind of minded person. Um, and with seeing some of the advanced and challenge callers, I got to see them get da floors of dancers to do stuff that I thought was impossible. And I couldn't believe how well they were able to manage the eight people on the floor. But I didn't, I wasn't at that time realizing what they were doing. And so I started analyzing exactly what they were doing. And I said, oh, well, at the beginning of the dance, they start out doing something that is basically what they want to do, but a small piece of it. And they get the dancers working their way through and they, and all of a sudden they figure out, well, now I'm going to do something a little bit harder, and I'm going to add to that, and then I'm going to add to that, and they do it all the way through, and it becomes very interesting. And at the end of the dance, we've done something which, which I thought was totally impossible, but at the same time it wasn't because we were led through it. And if you watch the way that they, those callers do it, that's, uh, that's something that's uh, very important uh, as a caller to learn how to do. So I've spent many years, and uh, I've been calling now for 26 years. Uh, I've been dancing for 32. Um, I started when I was nine, so it was very. Um, it's it's a very weird education that I've had, and I started calling at advanced and worked my way down to mainstream. What I'm going to show you, uh, and what I what I've got here in my handout is it. Uh, you know, we, we want to talk about choreo buildup and exactly what it is. And you essentially, you want to go from some kind of standard application to an extended application, uh, either during a tip or during an evening or during your entire program throughout the year. You may, you may want to build up to something throughout the year without actually letting the dancers know you're doing that. Uh, so it, it could be just that you're doing it something for the evening or something for the tip, but you can also do it for the whole year. Um, so the first thing you have to ask yourself is what makes dancing hard? And what makes dancing hard? Uh, I actually had to go to the Internet to find a good answer for this because everybody has their own idea of what makes dancing hard. There is a website on my 
uh, flyer here uh, that says uh, it's it's basically an article that was written by John Sabalski, and um, it is it is quite the awesome article and it's worth a read. So I would get the uh, handout and take a look at the website. But basically, what it says is what makes dancing hard is basically how it's called. So how you call a call can make it hard. You can either call it and give lots of help to the dancers, or you can just call it clean without giving any help. And so how it's called is very important. The arrangement of the dancers, are they, are they normal? Are they sashayed? Are they same sex? So how, how is the arrangement affecting how the dancers are doing this call? Also, there are modifiers to the call. You say, well, do this call, but replace this part of the call with something else. Well, that makes the call inherently hard because you've now changed the way the call is danced. And then the last one is geographic location. So if you're used to dancing a call from a certain position, if you change the geographic location of that, that call, it then makes the call infinitely harder. So how do we, how do, we do this? Uh, and what I've got in my notes here says you, you want to figure out what to work on. So you come up with a call, you come up with a, a figure, you come up with something, and, and you say, okay, I want to work with this, and how do I make this harder? You want to say, uh, you want to examine the sta- what the standard application is of that call. You want to say, oh, well, if I do this from a normal couple, this is going to be the standard application, and then I'll do this. And then the next thing I'll do is do it in a non-standard application, which will make it a little bit harder, but you'll lead the dancers into it. Um, and you have to figure out how far you want to go with the extended application. And that's one of the, uh, one of the hardest things altogether. Then you want to work the standard applications to get the feeling of the call so the dancers understand how the call is going to be completed. Then you want to work the call from alternative positions relating the call to the standard application that you've already worked. So that way the dancers will, will get what they're doing but realize that it's not that much harder than what they've already done. And then you want to expand it towards the final application, which is the hardest thing that they've ever seen, that they're going to go, oh, wow, that was really neat, and I can't believe I did it. But at at the end of the day, you want them to be successful. You want to lead them through it. And at the same time, you don't want to make it boring. So that being said, I need to get a square up on the floor to show you how this works. So if we can get a square up, that would be great. Yeah, we we need a couple in square number 32. Yeah, check your computer cards, please. We need one more couple. <laughs> we need one. Oh, there we go. Okay, so perfect. Let's let's have the heads lead to the right and circle to a line. Perfect. So we have our standard 1P, 2P line. Really, it's irrelevant what we've done. And in this case, I've come up with a zero, which I'm going to use. And it's a very simple zero, and it's it's using the plus level. So it's something that most of us will know how to do. What? Oh, sorry. Plus program. (laughs) Anyways, um, so let's, let's do this. Let's have the two ladies chain. Turn the girl a quarter more. So now we end with a two-faced line. Good. All of the girls hinge. Do a diamond circulate. Cut the diamond. Wheel and deal. Sweep a quarter more. Back away. Good. So you're done. It's a fairly simple figure, and you, and you can agree with me that there was nothing too hard with that. Maybe the turn a quarter more is sometimes is a little difficult. You might have to work on that beforehand. But I've just taken this figure and said, okay, now how do I make this harder? Okay, let's have everybody star through. Perfect. So what I'm doing here is I've changed the geographic location. I've I've rotated the box of 490 degrees. And this infinitely makes the call harder. Here, moving chairs. Perfect. Let's have the two ladies chain. Go. Turn the girl and watch out for the speaker. Turn the girl a quarter more. We need a bigger hall. Smaller people. (laughs) Beautiful. We're moving the speaker, too. Nice. Okay. So we've done the turn the girl a quarter more. Now the girls hinge. Now notice we now have point-to-point diamonds. Point-to-point diamonds are not easy for anyone, typically. Uh, 
And so, in essence, I've increased the difficulty of this like 10 times. And dancers don't necessarily like this, but you're doing the exact same figure that you just did, but at a 90-degree rotated angle. So you've changed the geographic location. It makes us seem a little bit harder. Everybody do a diamond circulate. And let's make sure the boys have handhelds with, the, with each other. Great. Okay. Again, you're going to have to give help to the dancers to get success from this. Each diamond, girls, you're the cutters, do a cut the diamond. You'll have a giant two-faced line again. Everybody do a wheel and deal and sweep a quarter and look, you're back to where you were. And all we've done is done that exact same zero, and, and it's, it's just led us to a point where I said, okay, well, we've done something really simple. We've now changed it and made it ever so slightly harder. Now let's go to what I call the crescendo, which is the end of this. Uh, everybody scramble home. Go. Now, I, I ever so politely refer to this as going off the reservation. Um, which, which I tend to do. Sometimes I'll do things that, that are not necessarily regular for square dancing, but I'm going to do this anyways. Now, first of all, in this case, I need to let the heads know. Heads, you need to know who you are, so identify who you are. Good. Sides, you need to know who you are as well. This is going to be very important for you. And, of course, during the program, I'm going to also let the dancers know that they need to know this because this is going to be part of how this is done. Let's have the four ladies' chain go straight across. Turn the girl one quarter more. Okay? All the girls hinge. Just move up to the next. Now, all the original heads identify. Heads, you have a diamond. Do you see it? Okay? Heads, do your part of a diamond circulate. Go to the next set of head positions. Good. You're right in the center there. Sides, put your hands up. Sides, you have a diamond. Sides, do a diamond circulate. Go. Okay, now everybody, heads work with heads. The sides are going to work with the sides. Girls, you're the cutters. We're going to do our part of a cut the diamond. Boys are going to work straight out to the end where that girl is, and the girls are going to slide together and trade by making a star. Go, cut the diamonds. Okay? Everybody do a wheel and deal and sweep a quarter. And you should be. Okay? So in essence... What you're doing is you're taking something that I started out as a very simple figure, and you, you all I, I can assume that you can all agree that it was a very simple figure, and we were able to walk through it without very much trouble. And then throughout the evening, I would then work my way towards doing it from the box of four that was 90 degree rotated, so they were doing point-to-point -point diamond circulates. And then at the very end, I would throw this at them and say, wow, look, it wasn't that cool. And because they were able to walk their way through most of that stuff, it, it felt comfortable to them, and that, that was the way you want to make it work with people. So you can get people to do the seemingly impossible by, by doing stuff. Now, I'm going to call it one more time, but this time I'm going to have you all do your diamond circulates at the same time, okay, which is the next step past the identifying your diamonds, okay? Four ladies' chain go straight across. Turn the girl a quarter more. All the girls hinge. Heads work with heads. Sides work with sides. Okay, we're all going to do our part of a diamond circulate. What will happen is the boys will go to the middle, the girls will go to the ends. Go, diamond circulate. Now in the same diamonds, cut the diamonds. Star. Everybody do a wheel and deal. Sweep one quarter more, back away, and you're home. Okay, so that's what I mean by, by getting... You know, going from something very simple to going to something very hard. And it may take you a dance or two. It might take you uh, a whole dance to do it, or it may take you just one, one tip to do it. But in, in order to do that, you have to prepare your dancers to be able to handle that. And that's kind of what choreo buildup is all about. And thank you guys very much for dancing. Mr. Brian Clark, how about a hand for that? <laughs> Golly, I didn't... I didn't know you could do all that stuff, and that's not a joke. <laughs> that was really good, Brian. Good job. All right. Come on. Does anybody have any questions for Brian or any other questions right now before we go on any further? That was great. I had I had a serious I had a, I have a serious question. To me, it's a serious question because I don't know the answer. You had a grand two faced line. Yes. And you call wheel. I'm not questioning what you're doing. I'm just I'm asking for my information. And you call wheel and deal. 
Yes. Watch to keep those two center couples from wheeling toward each other. Because when I teach wheel and deal, I teach every one of them that goes toward the center. And how do they know that they don't shouldn't go toward the center and they should stay in their own two face line? But, um, well, in an ideal world, you would identify each line of four wheel and deal. Each, okay. Yeah. Um, some, some verbiage it, would tell them. It, it does get confusing, uh, and and I've had a bunch of arguments with Clark about this because yeah, you have a line of eight, you also have a line of four. Mm-hmm. Um, back in my days learning at the teen festival, they always told us that a wheel and deal was always done from a line of four. And done from what? Always done from a line of four. A line of four. And, uh, and so we would do it on our own side. Uh, so, so in my mind, it, it, that's always the default is to work with your own single line of four. Even if you had a title, uh, two face line yeah. or a title one face line with, you know, each, each half facing one way, uh, all four could wheel and deal to the other side. But uh, in my head, I think of that as an as couples wheel and deal. Okay. All right. Yes. Sure. Jay Silver, North uh, Northwood, New Hampshire. To add to your comment from the two face lines of the wheel and deal, um, what I tell my dancers is after I call it from that position, I make sure that they know that they're going to be in a line of four facing in when they're done because it can be confusing. Okay. I've, I've done that before. I've done not the whole stuff you did, but the grand two-face line. I've done a wheel of deal, but I'll, I would preface my, this is me. It's me. I, I would preface, uh, that I'll tell each couple with a couple on your right, wheel and deal. And that's a, in that case, yeah, but just a different, but, but really, I don't, I really didn't know the answer. That's the reason I was asking the question. Okay. Any, any other questions? Anything else? Anybody want to ask? Anybody want to make a comment on anything? Mr. Ted Lazat from, uh, Manchester, New Hampshire. Thanks, Daryl. Um, all right, so I'm going to uh, kind of start back at, at the beginning and go over some of the stuff that Brian's gone over in a different way. So I'm looking at as uh, as you get different teachers, of course, different people explain it different ways. So maybe we'll cross paths here and overlap some things, and some things we'll talk about a little differently. Um, I come from a very similar, uh, remarkably, a very similar similar background to Brian. I started calling in 1988, so it's been about 24 years at this point. Um, in 1997, I took over for Tech Squares in Massachusetts for Don Beck as uh, he decided to move along. Um, and I've been there for 14 years. So uh, I do have a set of dancers that quite often can do just about whatever you ask them to do, and we spend a lot of time doing that. But I also call quite a bit outside of that area other than just on the Tuesday night, which then forces me to put on another hat. And so that's how, kind of how I wrote this, more of the choreo buildup and where it starts to. First of all, I would um, say if, if you're new to calling or you're just starting or whatever, when, since you never know who's in the audience, the first thing I would recommend that you pick up is your standard formations. Make sure you know what standard, what should be able to be done by most people across the country before you get out and start deciding what you want to play with and where you want to go with it. It's the easiest thing to do. It gives you your best chance of success, and then you can know what you're going to do. The next thing I would suggest that you do, if you have not already, is uh, put the caller judgment, which is the next uh, time segment, uh, on your list of things to go watch so that you know when to stop. Um, you really got to figure out how far you can go with what you want to do and where you want to go. Uh, for example, I, I would say that Brian did that in three steps. And my goodness, if I got that far in a weekend, I would be surprised. But, the, uh, you know, in three steps, he went from zero to 200. Um, and I would argue, and I'm sure he would admit as well that he was speeding it up for the sake of the panel. However, there's got to be at least another 50 different spots you can stop with that particular sequence along the way and getting people to do something. So understanding how far you can go and how far you can take anything is is very important. Um, Lastly, I would suggest that you don't just understand the call that you're giving or whatever you're working with, but also understand why it's tough from wherever it is. Um, as Brian said, he turned it 90 degrees. Why is that tough? Well, we know because it's 90 degrees. But really sit back and think about the call that you're going to give. Where is it difficult? Why is it difficult from there? 
where the common pitfalls are. So if you can give those up ahead of time and tell them where people tend to make mistakes besides them laughing when that actually occurs because you know it's going to occur, um, you can try to avoid those ahead of time and how to overcome the issue. Um, so with that being said, I went down to the like the very basic um, calls. One of the goals for me, if I'm doing any type of choreo buildup, by the end of the night, my goal is normally to be able to get them to do whatever new thing that I'm trying to introduce in a singing call that flows, that they can dance in time, and feel like they've succeeded. So that's usually, I try to have that goal by the end of the night. More like um, wind in your face dancing, Daryl, I would say, because we're giving that talk tomorrow. Um, but if you'd like to, that's kind of what I'm aiming for. So it gives me a direction. It gives me something to try to shoot for, and it gives me some place to go. And I think that's important because otherwise, again, caller judgment, if you just start going willy-nilly for the whole time, you could end up hurting yourself and maybe somebody else and somebody you love. Pauses for effect. Okay, we move along. Um, so one of the first things I try to use a lot is the left hand. I, I find that not a lot of people bring a left hand to a dance, so you got to find out who that is and who has it and who knows how to use it other than circling and alamanding. So I'll start with something uh, simple like, um, say, head star through, left square through three to a do-si-do. -do. Um, one, the do-si-do -do gets rid of the handedness if they screw it up, if they're you know, having fumbling in the middle, so you need to know that that's a pitfall. It sends them directly to their corner so that if anybody's messed it up or if you've lost everybody on the floor, you can immediately do-si-do -do right to the corner, alaman, and get out. Or if they're doing whatever they need to do, you can star through, move along, and keep going. So these are the kind of things that I, I think you should think about any time you start it. Where can they mess it up? How can you normalize it very quickly? And how can you get out of it should you end up losing anybody? From there, I'm going to do something to the tune of um, <clears throat> that same sequence again, something like that. I'll get them in that position. And I'll go from the, do from the left square through three into a right and left through causing them to have to have the handedness right. You know that they're getting that left, right, left, and then that right hand should be free, so they should be able to use it if it's starting to be smooth for them. So then you tune in that right and left through, or that touch a quarter, or something that uses the right hand, and again, normalizes them as something they're comfortable with very quickly, moves them along to something else down the line. <clears throat> then I kind of step away from it. Then I'll try to make sure that they, the left swing through works well. Most easiest way for everybody to get to a left swing through is to first find out if they can Dixie style the wave, right? It's the most common way. So I'll normally, from a it's very simple, again, to what Brian was doing, I'll have a zero line or any tickle line. Uh, we'll do a right and left through, common Dixie style, trade the boys for flow, left swing through, girl runs, bend the line, we're all back where we started. So you can see where the success rate is. Can everybody left? Can they find that hand? Can they move along? And you're right where you needed to be at the beginning. So we moved from there. From there, once I know that they can left swing through, and that's not a problem, and nobody's running the wrong way, and everybody seems to be with me, now we start to try to combine the things. <clears throat> so I'll have, like, centers in a normal, just normal wave. Again, you're going to have a double pass through formation. Centers starting with a normal right hand, square through three, giving them a left hand or a left shoulder now, and then I'll have them left do -si do Again, getting them going in a different direction to an ocean wave, telling them where they need to go, and also telling them that the boys are in the middle, giving them the biggest chance for success, and they immediately get into that left-handed wave that they're comfortable with, that the boys are normally in the center and they're going to work with. You could trade the boys for flow and move along. But it's taking these small pieces and moving them together. So now I can get them to left do -si do to a wave, left do -si do to a wave. After that, a couple of times... We'll get directly to a everybody ready with a left hand, left swing through. So we skip the do -si do completely, moving again into some type of a flow that works exactly what they've done before. But you'll notice we're trying to build these up very slowly along the way. Some can go pretty quick. You might be able to do this in a whole tip. Maybe it takes you longer depending upon the skill of the dancers that you're working with. But this process is still about the same. From there, once we've got them to that point, and I can do that, Um, I may go to the point where I can do a left square through four and start right from the get-go. So then on my singing call, I can get right there. I can also uh, try doing some other things with a left touch a quarter, and I didn't start to write it all out to the point where you could, um, from the left touch a quarter, have the boy run. 
You're a half sashayed and immediately box the net to normalize it. You can uh, left touch a quarter. If this is a really good group to a split circulate curl run, you're immediately normalizing it again within two calls. But with just those different things that I've put together, I wrote a s small, quick um, singing call figure, uh, which would be the heads left square through four, left do -si do to a wave, left swing through, curl run, bend the line, flutter wheel, slide through, swing. It flows very nicely. It's got three or four different things that maybe they don't do on a normal basis that you've introduced over the course of the dance, and you've immediately put that into play, and you started to use it. So I'll use that. Um, I can keep going. I had written some stuff on wheel around and so forth. But I would say, similar to what Brian was saying, find your way. Know where the call gets hard. Know how it gets difficult. Every single increment along the way. Um, I made the point during an extended applications program last year that you should be able to debate as to debate with somebody as to why your move is either slightly harder or slightly easier than the next person's move. Because if you can't build that castle and move yourself along in a slow manner and present it in a way that's easy, you're not going to help the dancers get where they need to go. So being able to break it down to that fine of a degree is going to help you succeed and it's going to help them succeed. So that's basically where I would go at this point. Anybody have any questions? Comments? Concerns? I'd like to see that singing call figure work. I want to see the smoothness. There you go. That's good. You'd like to. Well, hold, let's hold, hold on a second. got to get Jim can, to say that on mic. Can you... you um, Jim Watts, Riverdale, Maryland. I'd kind of like to see, and some of the other folks maybe as well, that singing call figure you just described for us and uh, uh, evaluate how it works. Ryan, I'll be the drum and you'll be the guitar, would you? <laughs> boom, boom, boom. It looks boom. like we would need a square for Jim. Yeah, come on. I would like the same square that can do that really weird... Uh, I don't. I didn't bring any music. No, I do have music on my laptop, but I, I don't. I'm not going to throw that. Boom, boom, All right, boom, cut it out. Boom, cut it out. Boom, I wasn't planning on calling. I didn't uh, bring the call. Sweet mother, for the tape, I am walking to my bag. I don't have a cord with me, the connection. But in any case, let's have the, um, we'll assume that you guys are the heads. Hi. Uh, let's have the heads star through and put your phone away. Just kidding. I know you are. I know you are. In the center, do a left square through three. Do to do. Perfect. Change directions for just a second. Alaman left. And then we'll come back. So we just want the whole thing from the top. I'm not going to go through the, the whole kit and caboodle. All right, so heads, we're starting, assuming that we've already worked our way. Left square through four. Everybody's ready with the left shoulder, left do -si do To a left-handed wave. Boys trade. Left swing through. Girl run around the boy. Bend the line. Slide through. And swing. It's not exactly, I think, the same because I'm sight calling you because I'm standing up and I'm not reading because I don't do that. But um, I know you were. I think that's what I wrote. I don't know if it's on a different page. Is that what you wanted to do? Do you have another question, or do you want to see that one again? Uh, Jim Wass again. It felt great. It was good. Uh, it was an added degree of difficulty, but it had good alternating direction, good alternating hand availability, etc. Thank you. Sorry, Daryl and I are talking to each other off the mic, which is completely inappropriate. Uh, he he asked, "What did you?" Oh, he asked if I did a left touch a quarter to a well, walk I and dodge you, and a wheel around. You said you had some other stuff with something similar where uh, uh, heads. If you want to head start from at home and start uh, do a left square through four, right? So everybody's left hand is available, and with your corner uh, that box one fourth, if you still recognize that position, that's old. You can left touch a quarter, so the men are looking out, girls are looking in. Do a walk and dodge, 
put you in a normal couple facing out, but your body flow is correct to do a wheel around. That's just a real good figure. Heads left square through four, left touch a quarter, walk and dodge, wheel around. Of course, then you can do a flutter wheel or whatever you got to do to get back to your corner or something like that. Tell me a question. And got Ken Britton. Yeah, uh, Ken Britton, Montgomery, Alabama. Uh, the question I have is that when you do the girls' run, should that be a girls' run left? Uh, you had uh, you had some girls on the end and some girls in the center, and uh, I think it should be run uh, girls run left. Isn't that correct? You're shaking your head. Why? Yeah, if I call Dixie style boys trade left swing, yeah, one, girls one girl, run, I'm one not girls on the end and one girls on the center. Go ahead, Betsy. Betsy got in New Jersey. At that point after the Dixie style and the left swing through, the girls were both in the center and they would have to run to the outside. So it should be fairly clear. Is that it where was it was? Not a single Is that face where it was? Line. Yeah, it was not a single face line. It was a wave, okay. which would have created a two face line. So it was okay. clear it by implication. My if you had a single face yeah. line, you might want to specify. It doesn't matter if it's right or, right or left. If you tell the centers to run, it's around the nearest end. Just for a helper word with an increased difficulty. Uh, oh, I'm Terry Sheriff from Palm Springs, California. The girls run left is just another helper word to help them to know which direction to go if you're trying to build up on the difficulty. Yes. Sometimes I'd agree with that, but as we said, we were also, we would have been working these things along the way, so they would have been getting this pattern and repeating it maybe the first couple of times, certainly. You guys got anything else? Anything else? Uh, you I guys, don't. You got anything else? No. Betsy? Question or comment? This is a singing call figure you built up. Would you work some of that stuff out in the patter so they were familiar with it before you put it in the singing call, which is more closely timed, depending on the floor? Yeah, I think I, I, think I did. I, w I normally wouldn't repeat. I'm not the, the kind of person that's going to, like, do the singing call patter, do the singing call patter in the – in the patter tip over and over again and then put on the record and do the exact same thing that they've been doing. But that's what I had done by working the ideas. They've played with the left square throughs. They've played with the left swing throughs. They've played with these other parts. And I do them separately from each other, which is where, to Daryl's uh, mentioned before, maybe we'll do, if we had also been working wheel around, we'd be doing that left touch a quarter and moving something else along. So I'd be splitting them up and then putting those pieces together, not necessarily the same way I did in the pattern, but something close to it when we get to the singing call. So so we've got lots of time. Why don't we do the wheel around thing? Um, if you want to do let's, the wheel around let's, thing. Let's do it. Let's get a square up. Everybody loves dancing. So, yeah, we're not going to put music on. We're just going to show you. So, again, you, you have to you have to imagine yourself, well, wheel around doesn't seem too hard, but there's, there's a whole lot more that you can do with wheel around than most people do. Um, so the things you have to realize are that we have to we have to first get the dancers to recognize what a re, what a wheel around is and recognize the call itself. So let's let's just do this. Uh, everybody promenade. Go. Good. Head man and the girl you got wheel around. Great. So now you have a general idea of what the wheel around is all about. Okay. Do a right and left through. Turn the girl one quarter more. All the couples circulate. Everybody do a partner trade and promenade. Don't stop. Don't slow down. Side man and you go, you got wheel around. So now you've, you've all done the wheel around. You can all think to yourselves, oh, I know how to do a wheel around. But where else can we do wheel arounds from? Well, the magical part is you can do a wheel around from any time you have a couple. Uh, so it's, it's quite the fun move to do. Everybody do a right and left through. Turn the girl. And then everybody wheel around. Just keep going. Nice. So it's fairly easy to do, but you have to get the dancers to work their way towards it and use flow to your advantage. Everybody do a partner trade. Do a right and left through. Turn the girl one quarter more than you want to. All the girls trade and everybody wheel around. Girls push the boys halfway. All the couples circulate. Okay? All the boys trade. Bend the line of four. Do a right and left through. Perfect. Pass through. Okay. Now this is going to be a little bit more difficult, but it does flow. And it's it, for some of you, you might th never think about this, but let's think about it. Everybody do a wheel around and go. 
Now the center four only wheel around. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, so things can become a little more difficult, and but you have to remember that there, there are certain rules to the call and certain ways that you can do it. All the centers um, run around the ends. Okay, pass through. Now, again, what makes this difficult is arrangement. Usually, when we're doing a wheel around, we have the girls pushing on this one. In this case, we've got both guys and girls pushing. So we now have a mixed sex, mixed sex arrangement. But you have to remember, whoever's on the right-hand side is going to be doing the walking forward, and who's on the left-hand side is going to be sort of turning around. From here, everybody wheel around. Okay? So then what I want to do is add a modifier to it. Everybody pass through. Good. Everybody wheel around. And a quarter more. And the center's trade. And everybody wheel around. Couples circulate. So you see, it, it can get fairly simple, but you can also make it very complex. The other thing that you want to do is remember that not only can you do a wheel around, but you can do a reverse wheel around, which means that the person who's on the left-hand side goes forward and the person on the right doesn't turn back. All the centers trade and everyone reverse wheel around. Couples circulate. Okay? Okay, and again... All, all we're going to do is we're going to modify calls. I'm going to say, replace the first part of a spin the top with a reverse wheel around. Everyone reverse wheel around and go. Reverse, wheel, re reverse, wheel around. Reverse. And then fan the top. Centers three and the ends move up. Nice. Okay. From here, um, let's see. Everybody do a U-turn back and I'll feel so much better. Perfect. As couples... Okay? As couples swing through. And the center couples wheel around. Nice. As couples wheel and deal. There's your line. <laughs> no, 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 no. As couples. Sorry, I'm going on the advance list, which is kind of painful for me to do. Um, Ted, I'm sure you have more. Um, I was going to actually uh, just have you explode and square your set. Because you don't remember where you were, do you? Hold on. You got something other than a wheel around? Uh, no, I, I got the wheel around. I okay. think the, the point I was going to try to make again is I think um, from, from where Brian starts and he, he takes it up, where's the first place that you would use wheel around? I wouldn't do it from a, a promenade. I think when the heads, pro, heads wheel around or the sides, prom, uh, sides wheel around, I think not everybody's walking the same speed. I think it's difficult. I think that they sometimes are off a 45 degree angle and half of them don't remember who heads and sides were half the time anyways. Um, pretty much you can just say square through and whichever two goes, it goes. It doesn't matter to me and I can fix it from there. So in, in my case, probably I would do something like let's have the head square through two, right and left through the outside, veer to the left. Everybody bend the line, pass through, wheel and deal, and the centers wheel around. Keep turning to the ones behind you, LMN left. So I, I'm going to call the wheel around and then promo wherever you got to do to get home. Um, so I would call the wheel around to the first point where I'm going to get them to their corner. I'm going to get them someplace where there's only four people I got to worry about instead of uh, eight people I got to worry about to get it right. And I'll make sure they're going to get in and they're going to get out as easily as possible so that I can move along and try it again. So when you're doing choreo buildup, um, I took this more as it was choreo buildup from the bottom level more than the extended applications where we're going to take it and go absolutely crazy with it um, in order to get the success. And so, <laughs> and, and Brian's crazier than me, and I, I completely acknowledge that, and that's fine. So I, I, I would go from there. I would start that point, and then I would probably switch that around to uh, anybody else. I would wheel around again from probably the same position, but I wouldn't have it be corner so that I can move along and do something else. But at least they're repeating the action. And then uh, one that I like, this one of my favorites, just have the heads uh, lead to the right, veer to the left, and chain down the line, cinder back Dixie style. Boys trade for flow, left swing through, girl run around the boy, everybody wheel around, girls connect. So again, you can tell them girls connect, a lot of them will wheel and deal, 
uh, depending upon if they haven't done it from there before. These guys are obviously very good dancer callers, caller dancers. Uh, so they're, they're very good. And I usually trade the girls immediately just so that the girls have connected. If anybody screws up, they're going to usually veer to the left to make that line for me. And then they'll, the girls trade. So again, I'm going more with the fact of can you get them into something? Can you find it? Can you fix it really quick? Get everybody, pick them back up and go. Um, and then normally the joke would be, let's say a couple circulate and let's go play with somebody who knows what they're doing. That way you get somebody else, uh, in case you've lost anybody else, they see what's happening and they get to keep moving. And I'll turn that to Daryl. Okay, let's square your sets just a second. Uh, and I may say something that's not correct, so you can correct me, that's alright, but, uh, I call a lot of dances for maybe people I don't know or maybe people I do know, but um, I don't think the callers use wheel around a lot. I'm using this as an example. It's not stuck with wheel around, but I'm using. And 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 how, what, how do you handle that? You know, if you want to call a wheel around, but uh, I work some of the stuff similar to what these guys did, so that everybody understands wheel around. No problem. Okay, you're going to go, it's standard to the left, and I also do the reverse wheel around, but I also then put it in a singing call. And I've got a figure I'd like to share with you, if I may, okay? And, of course, I wish we had some music going. But anyway, the head square through four. Just dun, 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 dun. Everybody do side do and look at them. Now, star through. Yeah. Right and left through. Ladies lead Dixie style. All right, here it comes. Now, y'all listen. Y'all watch this. Gentlemen trade. And the first time you do this, I would work this into pattern, okay? I'd work this into pattern. All the ladies run left, and of course the men know they have to slide out, and the girls are holding right hands. And I tell them, this is just for body flow and make the music work. Ladies with your right hand trade twice. Everybody wheel around and promenade. Just go two steps. But that goes real well in a singing call, okay? You take, got your corner with you, okay? One more time. Side square through four. And I'll skip some of the do si or whatever. With the outside slide through. Right and left through. Ladies lead Dixie style, and I bet you noticed before I had the men trade, just the four men scoot back. Guess what? Just like a trade. Everybody, all the girls run left. And the ladies with a right hand trade twice, and everybody wheel around and promenade about two steps. Square you set, and four ladies chain across, and everybody should be at home. Okay. Anything y'all want to say right now? Okay, let me mention a couple of things. Y'all can help. Y'all can, no, stay there for me if you don't mind, because I want, I want to use you just a little bit more if you don't mind. I've, I guess put some notes, wrote them down last night. And every session I start uh, teaching callers or, or what have you, I, I put this at the first of it. It doesn't matter what the name of the session is. My number one item, most important thing, dancers win. That makes sense to you? You can study this stuff. You can write it down. You can do it all day. If the people can't dance it, guess what it's worth? Nothing. Nothing. And you're going to look. Say, question. I thought I heard somebody say something. Did you have something? No. Okay. All right. Uh, all this stuff is the standard stuff about using proper hands, proper turning. And I've got the judgment. These guys both mentioned the judgment part. Um <laughs> You can call some things that, that in your mind you know they're going to break down if they're not more than excellent dancers. Well, don't call that or use some helping words or, or shape, shape them into it. And um, I got a note here um, that I wrote down uh, uh, from a personal experience. I put always, you're going to work some of this stuff. Always review the definition of the call. Uh, when I teach beginner classes, I take the little book. I've taught for 42 years. Before I teach, I'll read the definition. I usually find something different every time. I guess my, what I'm talking about is more cho- uh, choreography variety than it is perhaps choreo buildup. But you have to do these things to build up to whatever you want to do and get them, get them to do these things. Um, I was calling a, a figure at 8-2, and, and I, I really had some what I thought was some real good stuff. It went well for the people who enjoyed it. And a caller came up to me and said, uh, I don't think that's the right definition. And I didn't really argue with him, thank goodness. I said, I'll check it out. And I did, and he was correct. I did this in 2010, and they had changed this particular call just to modify the call a little bit in 2008, and I had not read it. So I read my, I read my new stuff every time it's changed, and I'm suggesting you do the same thing to get the definitions down. Um, nearly every call I call for a, for a group that, doesn't, that does not dance with me a lot I don't think I've ever called an open dance where you did not need to workshop slide through and turn through. Some of them will do a slide through. Uh, let's put it this way. Most people will do a slide through if you have two normal couples facing. 
Anything else, most likely they won't. They'll turn the wrong way. So I have a little, um, I have a couple of things. I, I'm going to back up one before I do this and do something more simple. Face your partner, everybody. I get them up like this during, during patter, okay? And you have to cue them now because you, you know that dancers are going to do what they want to do, and that's great. I don't want to criticize them. I don't criticize them whatever, for that. If they, it's whatever they like to do. Everybody do a do si do just like you should. Face your partner. Right hand, pull by. Left shoulder do si do now, See, this is easy if you all the way around. Look at your partner. Left hand, pull by. Right shoulder do si do Back up, look at them, and wink with only your right eye. Right hand, pull by. Left shoulder do si do Look at them and wink only with your left eye. And your left hand, pull by. And the girls turn around, promenade home. Okay, promenade home. I do that to get them to do a do si do properly. That's all. I don't stand up here and preach at them and say, hey, you got to do this. You got to do that. You got to do this. Okay, let's do this now. Uh, how about the head couples pair off? Y'all, everybody with me pair off? So, yeah, and sides half sachet. So we got a boy looking at a boy and a girl looking at a girl, and y'all are all mixed up, so I probably won't get you right to start with. Every- huh? No yellow. no yellow rocks? Okay, everybody pass through and face the person beside you. We have lines some kind. Pass through and wheel and deal. we got all girls in the middle and all the boys on the outside. Ladies step to a wave. Now, when I'm doing instruction, I try my best to keep it at mainstream. I may slip up and do a plus call or something like that, okay? The center girls run around the end girl and then roll. New center girls trade and roll. All the boys take one step forward. Okay. Now, at some point in here, I have taught them how to do slide through, okay? Or I've mentioned how to do slide I'm not talking about a beginner's class. I'm talking about an open dance or, or a particular workshop. And I, and I tell them that the girls, you know, you, to do a slide through, you have to pass somebody with a right shoulder, stand in their footprints, and every time, no matter what, you turn a quarter to your left, okay? And boys, every time you slide through, you pass somebody with a right shoulder, stand in that spot, face to your right. Center two girls slide through. Same two girls and the man you're facing slide through. Center two men slide through. All the men slide through. Everybody slide through. All the girls slide through. Center two girls slide through. That girl and a boy slide through. Center two men slide through. That was nine times, okay? Gentlemen wheel and deal and the girls quarter in. I know it's a little crowded right there. Boys step to a wave. Same, same thing, but they're starting at a different spot. It feels a little bit different. Center boys run and roll. New center boys trade and roll. Got girls take one step forward. That one step forward is important. Okay? Center two men slide two. Same man and a girl slide two. Center two girls slide two. Everybody slide two. No, all the girls, excuse me. Now, everybody slide two now. I just got out of line there. Just the boys slide two. Center two boys slide two. Same boy with a girl slide two. Center two girls slide two. Girls touch hands, bend the line, you're right in between the boys, and we could do something to get out of this three-in-one line, it would be all right. Okay, y'all get your partner square up. Anyway, that's the kind of thing I like to do so that without standing up here and preaching at them, you, you ought to be able to do a slide, too. You know how to do that. You had that clack. I got another one. That's what I do, at, and, and get them to do that. And you can build that up into any kind of choreography pretty much you want. Okay, go ahead. Here we go. All right, this is, this is downright crazy, okay? All the heads do a left touch a quarter and spread. Slide apart, they have the others step in. Good. Let's have the side boys extend to each other. Grab rights. Good. Head boy dodge to the left. Dodge behind that boy. Go. Yes. Nice. Now the head boy cross fold behind the furthest girl. Okay. The head, the head girls and the side boys face in. Perfect. You're all looking at a shoulder except the center two boys are looking at each other. Okay. Now, the center two boys, you're going to start for everyone. You're going to do seven consecutive touch of quarters, alternating hands, beginning with a right. Okay. Do a right touch of quarter. The four in the middle, do a left touch of quarter. The six, do a right touch of quarter. All eight, do a left touch of quarter. The center six, do a right touch of quarter. Go, 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 go. Center four, do a left touch of quarter. And the very center two, do a right touch of quarter. Perfect. Now, uh, let's see. I think your side boy... Side boys and the head girls face in. Good. Everybody's facing somebody breathing. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Everybody's star through. Good. Centers, veer left and bend the line. The others finish a wheel and deal. Great. Square your set like this. Everybody face your new corner. Pass through. 
star through with the next girl. And you should be. So I like to get weird. <laughs> so, but, but of course, it, you know, I, I wrote that, I wrote that for the 2009 uh, Teen Square Dance Festival's uh, mystery that I did that year. And the, the funny part about it was I figured, oh, this is going to be really difficult. They're never going to get this. And then I watched a set of teenagers walk their way straight through it. And they did it without any issue. It's actually on the web if you want to take a look at it. It's on YouTube. So you can find it if you do a search for the 2009 Senior Final. And it'll be there. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> Does anybody else have questions? Questions, comments? We'll do one more little thing right here, and then we'll, uh, we'll let it go, okay? How about the heads pair off and the sides half sachet? Everybody pass through and face the person beside you. Have a line. And you, do whatever, you can do whatever you do to get boys and girls together, okay? And uh, let's do a um, pass through and wheel and deal. Girls in the middle. I didn't really mean to do that, but it's okay. Girls pass through, make a wave of the boys, and swing through, and all the centers run around the ends. Couples circulate, and only the girls bend the line. Now, we can do couples circulate or couples walk and dodge, all kind of things from right here. But anyway, what I want to do, and it's part timing and, and everything. I'm, don't move for a second. The girls are like in a two-face line, you know, an imaginary two-face line or a phantom two-face line. I'm going to have the girls' Ferris wheel. Now, it's going to get a little crowded with these guys, so i got to get the guys out of the way in time, okay, in time, okay? So just the four girls' Ferris wheel, the men veer left, and the boys bend the line. You're right behind the girls. Good. Centers pass through. That would be the girls. Swing through. Centers run. Okay, and I'm going to be able to do the, do the same thing. I'll do some movement before this. But anyway, boys only bend the line. And just the men Ferris wheel. The girls veer left. Girls bend the line. You're right behind the boys. Boys pass through. Everybody swing through. All the centers run. Bend your line. Touch one quarter. Only the men... Most of the stuff I do is plus. I do some A and all that, but anyway, most of what I do is plus. Only the men do a track two. Ladies straight ahead do a half tag. Girls cast right three quarters. We have standard diamonds. Flip the diamond. Boys in, girls out. All eight circulate. <laughs> Centers run. Couples circulate twice and a half. Bend your line and the heads go right to left through. Is this where y'all started? I wouldn't. I don't, I'm not even sure. No, nah, girls got to change some somewhere. That's, that's good. That's good. Anyway, you got the idea. Put two people together and, and uh, have some people going one way and some people going the other way. I think it adds to a little variety and you can and get a lot of fun out of it. Any questions? Any comments? Y'all got anything else? Y'all got anything else? Thank you very much for coming here today. We really do appreciate you. I hope you got a little something out of your news. Okay.